I want that. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now in this video, we are going to be doing something completely different and I'm so, so excited because this is definitely a video more for me than it is for you guys. My favorite games sequel has come out and I just, Horizon Zero Dawn is my favorite game of all time. And for the sequel to come out, I just had to make something for it. So I'm going to be making a tall neck. Now this is something very out of my element as for anybody who watches my channel normally they know that I make art dolls which are these furry organic animals and fantasy creatures and stuff so to make something that's a machine but still looks like an animal is, is very difficult so it is going to be quite the adventure and I can't wait to take you along the ride with me. So let's get started. To start the tall neck, I did do a little bit of work off camera, so let's catch you up on what I've done. The first thing I did is cut out a paper template of the exact size I wanted him to be. And then I cut out patterns based off that template so I can use to cut out some MDF board, which I'm going to be using as his armature. So I traced those patterns on and then cut them out. And now you're all caught up to speed. And so now I need to glue those MDF pieces together. So you notice right there was a little bit too shiny. So I'm going over it with a little bit of sandpaper just to make sure that it's nice and rough and that the glue will adhere to each other and be nice and secure. To secure the pieces of MDF board together, I am going to be using wood glue. And now I just want to give a disclaimer throughout this entire video and my voiceover is probably going to be all over the place. I know how to do art dolls. Uh, <laughs> this is like something completely out of my realm of doing and, and it was very intimidating to do because the the idea is the same but it's a completely different way of doing it. I'm not doing anything I know how to do. <laughs> I'm not making the armature I know how to make. I'm not doing quilt batting. I'm not doing chunk 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 boy or thin 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 boy. I'm not doing none of that. We're just doing something completely new and for anybody who has not seen my channel before this video is very confused by all the things I just said. Please go look at other <laughs> videos I've done to understand those references. References, people, references. Okay, <laughs> I'm done, I promise. But yeah, this was out of my element for sure and it was just, it was really challenging but I, I know I'm, I love the end result because I'm doing this voiceover before I'm even done with the video now but so like I don't know how it, it ends up being but I, you know how it ends up being because you saw the thumbnail. So, you know, I hope it's turning out really great and I'm realizing I rambled this entire time and I didn't tell you anything about what I was doing um, I glued the pieces together and now I'm uh, dremeling the uh, pieces down so it matches the template that I put and now I'm drilling a hole <laughs> <laughs> these big projects always turn me into just a blubbering mess and I'm just all over the place look at my little hair just coming into frame. Hello, we are supposed to be drilling holes into the armature for the limbs to be able to be posed, but my hair is in the way. <laughs> I hope you guys like the chaos because this is like ultimate chaos right now. This is just chaos. Okay, okay, I am actually going to focus. Here are all the pieces that I cut out of the MDF board. I look like I'm hoarding. Oh god, I can't, I can't focus. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're focusing, we're focusing, okay. Okay, here I am making a mock-up of what the tall neck is going to be looking like. Now, remember, this is a, an armature, so this is just a form that I'm going to be gluing stuff onto to really, really build up the shape, but I wanted something very sturdy to use as his inner armature so that it will support the very heavy head and his very tall, lengthy body, so... I decided to use MDF board because it's very, very sturdy and it's very easy to cut and it's very uh, user friendly and it's just, it was an all around good material. And so the mock up is looking very, very good. So now I need to lock all those joints in place with the nuts and bolts that I have. And for that, I'm using Loctite. I want to make sure that once I have this as tight as I want, that it is never going to come undone. And I just know that is a very good little gel thingy to have to do that. <laughs> 
So while the joints are drying, I'm going to be cutting out some high density foam to layer on top of his armature. Now I use this material because I've seen a lot of cosplayers use it, especially when they're making props or making um, cosplay costumes and things like that. And it just looks like a very versatile material to build up um, layers and like trim it back where you need it. And so I, I mean, my, the tall neck isn't a prop, but I'm kind of treating it like it is with the way I'm going about things and the way I'm doing it. It's like between a miniature and a, a cosplay prop with how I'm using all the things. Thank God for YouTube and all the bajillion videos I've watched to kind of piece together what I should be doing. But that's why I chose foam because I've seen a lot of people use it. It looked like a very versatile material and it is and so it worked very well to just build up that that thickness that I needed for the tall neck very quickly so that way I can cut it back and really round out those edges and shape it to exactly how I wanted. And so you'll see right here I'm using dowels to make sure I line up that foam onto the MDF board so that way that when I slide the bolts through the entire body that it's still going to be able to go through the holes without any issues whatsoever. So as you see, I'm just going in with a little bit of hot glue and starting to layer those um, faux pieces onto the MDF board. I didn't have contact cement or any of that holy grail stuff that cosplayers use, but hot glue with high heat just worked perfect. I, I love my hot glue, especially if you get the good stuff. I always say if you get the good stuff, hot glue is your best friend. <laughs> so I'm just um, layering it on the MDF board, making sure that I can get enough on there that I don't have to do too much trimming back, but I do want to do some just to make sure I like right here, I have those nice beveled edges and that it's not such a harsh line and it adds a little bit more organic shape because a tall neck, you know, it's still a machine, but it's still a machine that's based off of an organic being, being an, a giraffe. So I want to make sure that I still have those organic shapes. And I even go back in even more so with a Dremel just to really make sure I round out those edges. Because the next step that I'm going to be using after Dremeling is foam clay. And foam clay is, is just this wonderful material. And I, it's, it's so fun to poke. I would honestly tell you guys to go buy some foam clay just to stick your fingers in it just like be a child and just poke at it because it is so fun and it's not sticky and it, it's just, i don't know it's just it's a very fun material <laughs> and i had a lot of fun messing around with it but i'm using that foam clay to even build up that shape even more and even add those more organic um, rounded edges to the legs and bodies and, and just the shape just to build it up a little bit more and and also to hide a little bit more of the MDF board and to uh, hide the bolts a little bit so they weren't showing as much even though I ended up covering them in armor anyway but you know at the time I was like this seems like a smart idea <laughs> so <laughs> that's that's the kind of thing I was going for and I also want to make sure that while I'm adding all the foam clay to constantly move the joints that way I'm not making it in a way that once it dries it's going to inhibit the joint from moving that's always going to be at the forefront of my mind even at the body like here I'm adding some to build up his tum tum a little bit but I want to make sure that I can still move the legs how I want to and that it's a seamless transition and that it's not going to inhibit their movement whatsoever so these are things that I went back and forth with constantly just to make sure everything was seamless everything worked with each other and it all just moved how I wanted. Once the foam clay had dried because essentially it's an air dry clay, I then went over all the MDF board and exposed bolts and stuff and just painted them black so that it blended more in with the next step and that it wouldn't show just a wood texture or wood color underneath. And the next step is adding cable meshings to the entire thing. I'd like to introduce you to my hell. <laughs> So I, if any of you watch my channel, you know that I make art dolls. And so I'm working constantly with things like faux fur and faux fur is like glitter, except a lot worse. It, it, it's everywhere and it attacks you. And it, it's just, you know, I, you know, this is what I thought anyway, that faux fur was the worst. And then I came across this stuff and oh my God, <laughs> it just, it actually attacks you. Like every time I snipped a little bit off, like it would just 
turn into like the I'm devil and attack my clothes <laughs> and like weave itself into my clothes and so every time i moved it was just pokey 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 oh it was a little stabby stab a little stabby stab over here if i tried to move it just it was the nightmare <laughs> But it was such an essential step because I, I'll post some pictures here. If you look at the tall neck, his inner workings, you know, his cables and wirings and stuff. And I found this mesh tubing and it looked like exactly like what is on the tall neck. And so I was very pleased and I was like, oh my God, I found the best material. This is going to work so well. And little did I know the tribulations I would go through. Oh my God, it's horrible. I'm still so scarred. <laughs> Don't get cable meshes, guys. Don't do it. To find something else, I promise you. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> but once the cables are added, I then go back over it with some more black paint just to make sure all the glue blobs are hidden. And once I have braved the itchiest, pokiest material I have ever worked with, it is now time to finally assemble the tall neck's body. Working with it in just multiple different pieces is like, it's fine and all to, and it's easier to work with it, but seeing it like actually come together and actually function as you want it to so far, is just really, really rewarding. So it was very awesome to see the tall neck finally come together. And he is so tall. I cannot get this boy in frame. So we're going to have to film him in sections. Cause as you can see, I have to tilt my camera quite a bit to just to get you to see the top and his head is not even on yet. So <laughs> he's definitely a big boy. Oh, dang it. I forgot. And I realized that after I put his body together, no, I added more of the nightmare meshing over his booty and over his back and belly just to make sure that we close that gap. So it's just a, a, just a little bit more of hell. Just a little bit more. It's, it's fine, guys. It'll be over soon. I promise. Yay. It's over. I think. Oh God. I hope so. I hope it's over. <laughs> I'm, pre I'm pretty sure it's over. I'm pretty sure it's over. Oh God, I could, I could just feel it looking at me though. <laughs> but now it's time to work on the tall neck's outer shell. Now, uh, I thought 3D sculpting would be the best way to go about this because obviously I'm somebody who has sculpted, you know, 3D sculpted for like 30 years and I'm just so talented and immediately know how to absolutely identically recreate a tall neck's outer shell bolt for bolt uh section from section um i'm sorry what's that i i haven't been doing zbrush and 3d sculpting for like 20 something years and I, I i don't work at gorilla and i don't i don't know how to do this uh-huh uh-huh you know i've only been doing this for like a few months i have no idea what i'm doing oh uh, okay okay well color me surprised <laughs> Yeah, it turns out I had absolutely no idea what I was doing it, and I was just winging the shapes and hoping they would look machine-like. Like, clearly, that bone absolutely looks like a machine, right? Clearly, this little piece of toast that I'm currently sculpting definitely looks like a machine. I totally wasn't hungry when I was doing that. <laughs> but no, seriously, I ended up just kind of winging it and just praying and hoping for general machine aesthetic i ended up just adding some actual imagery from the video game into the actual uh outer shell that i was sculpting so like that mark right there is from a prominent character named rost that is his tribal marking i'm making another symbol from the video game for gaia who is another prominent character like i don't want to give any spoilers for anybody who hasn't seen the game because like you absolutely should it's a very beautiful game and a very amazing game i love the storyline so i'm just adding like prominent things from the game itself into the outer shell because i thought it was a good idea and i had no idea what i was doing and you know we were just hoping that if i disguised it enough it would work <laughs> so did it work let me know <laughs> Once all the 3D sculpting is done, I print it out on my Anycubic Photon Mono X, which is just a lot of mouthful. <laughs> Since the head was so massive, I had to print it in two parts, and now we need to glue those two parts together. But before we do that, I want to sand down each of the sides just to make sure they are a nice flat surface and it has a bit of a rough texture for the epoxy glue that I'm mixing right here to adhere to, so that is a nice 
again secure and it's not going to just flop apart like halfway through or something that's that's definitely not what we want and so then i just used some rubber bands to keep it together and then i had to babysit that thing for a while and then to get rid of the print line i left it in some places because i thought it gave a nice like machiney look but it I used epoxy sculpt to get rid of most of it and I'm just smoothing that all out which was an absolute pain. I also made sure to sand that very well afterwards. <laughs> And now it's time to paint all the pieces. I'm kind of just going to go over the general vibe of everything I did because it is pretty much the same process for the entire thing. But basically I'm doing a base coat in the colors using a ton of my reference photos to figure out what colors go where. So what needed to be black, what needed to be white, what needed to be silver, what needed to be gold. And then I would go over those with dry brushing. And I also wanted to make sure that I went in and add which I'm very proud that I could even manage to do this because I, I'm not a miniature artist or anything like that. I make really, really big things, but I don't know how to paint tiny, tiny little details. So you see me right here? I'm painting a tiny little detail and it does look as wonky as I thought it was going to look. And so I'm just very proud. <laughs> so I did like a bunch of little details around that everywhere. But basically, I'm rambling again. What I'm trying to say is you do a base coat, you do a wash of color, so it's just a really, really watered down paint and you wash it over the entire piece and then you dab off all the excess so it gives a nice texture and it, it adds shading for you. It's very effective and very easy to do. And then I add some highlights if, if I did too much of a wash, you know, with a little bit of dry brushing and stuff. And especially for the, since we're making something that's metal, I wanted to make sure that around the like edges, I wanted to chip away the paint. Like naturally um, in, in the world, paint would chip off of really sharp edges of any metal eventually. And I imagine this thing walking around for God knows how long. So I wanna make sure that I start chipping off the paint here and there to show wear and tear. I didn't want this machine to look pristine and just fresh out of the factory. I wanted to make it look like it's been walking around for a while and that just gave a lot of nice texture and a lot of more realism and, and uniqueness to it. And while I'm painting, just because I'm not doing an intro or my daily reminder how I normally do it, don't think I'm not going to tell you guys that this is your not so daily reminder that if you have been thinking about something, if you've been thinking about a project and you've been really wanting to do it, but you've just been saying to yourself that you're either not good enough or you don't have the materials to start or you don't know even where to begin and you're just talking yourself out of it. Hey, okay, I am here to tell you. No, you stop that right now, okay? You, for the, at least just for the rest of this video, go start that project. And that could be getting a materials list made. That could be getting uh, all your supplies together. That could be just drawing your first line. That could be uh, getting your clay together. Just whatever that first step is, go start that first step. And you will just feel so proud that you started. And you may even, like who knows you may just like continue on after that and so I just I really want to encourage you guys if there's a project that you've been wanting to do go start it I believe in you you can absolutely do it I mean this guy I never thought I could do something like this I was completely intimidated by this because this is something I've never done before this is not something in any of my skill sets that I've ever known how to do but I really wanted this and so I went for it and with the wonderful help of editor Sarah because she practically helped me make half this thing we managed to make something really really cool and that I'm really really proud of and if I I would have never been able to do it if I let myself talk myself out of it you know so just like go start it you got this and I believe in you and I love you and please go drink some water and I'll drink some water too see that I, I well you can't see but I, I got my water bottle <laughs> And once all the painting is done on the body, the head, the neck, the legs, just all over the place because this guy is details for days, it is finally time to start assembly. And like I mentioned earlier, like if I thought it was cool to see his cable meshing body come together, oh my god, that has nothing 
on having the final armor pieces or out of shell pieces coming together and and just really making a tall neck look like a tall neck because like the cable meshing and stuff like it had the general vibe like yeah you could kind of see it but like with these steps like, you could really see it you could see like the final details like really bring it together and it's just so so satisfying when you get to get to that final point especially when you're really excited because i sometimes i wanted to like half do it i'm not gonna lie because i just wanted to get to the end quicker because it looks so cool like look at all this look at all these pieces i'm just i'm so excited that we get to put it all together and while i could do more commentary i think i'm just going to let this assembly section speak for itself and i just want you guys to sit back relax to the music and just enjoy the process of him coming together <music> Okay, I am going to interject a little bit here because I just wanted to share with you the panic I was having. This was the final step and it was the scariest part because I wasn't sure if the head was too heavy for Mr. Tallneck and if he was going to flop over, if the head was going to fall over, but it all worked out. And I'd like to say that he is about two Stewies tall and <laughs> look at Stewie, he's so cute. But Stewie is here to tell you that it's time for the final reveal. <laughs> 